Welcome to you all for this first Sunday in Lent, the 21st of February, 2021. I'm Pastor Steve Keenberger from Peace First Lutheran Church in Astoria, Oregon, and we are pleased to uh, bring this online worship service to you all, especially as we start this 40-day journey to the cross of Christ and on to Easter. Um, we're so excited uh, in our community. I hope that you are all safe out there. Many of our seniors, our healthcare professionals, first responders and teachers are getting the vaccination for COVID-19. And so we're moving along, making great progress in Clatsop County. And so we're very excited uh, for all who are able to receive this vaccination. I pray that you are safe as we journey together to the cross of Christ during this season of Lent. If you would like to download our worship bulletin, please go to the links provided with this video or peacefirstlutheran.com and you, you may download the worship bulletin, follow along if you wish, especially as we sing the hymns and have the readings for today. Let us then begin our worship service this Sunday with that ancient of greetings, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We sing with one another, celebrating Black History Month in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship, hymn number 459, Wade in the Water. Thank um. in white God's gonna trouble the water the leader looks like the Israelite God's gonna trouble the water wait in the water wait in the water children wait in the water God's That band all dressed in red, God's gonna trouble the water. Looks like the band that Moses led, God's gonna trouble the water. We in the water. Do I see God's gonna trouble the water? The Holy Ghost a coming on me. God's gonna trouble the water. We in the water. We in the water, children. We in the water. Don't believe I've been redeemed. God's gonna trouble the water. Just follow me down to Jordan Stream. God's gonna trouble the water. We in the water. We
Let us pray the prayer of the day with one another. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, I invite the young at heart and the children among us to gather close to the screen, gather around for a brief message uh, to you that I hope will highlight an element of our gospel reading today, our good news reading. We have uh, started to um, send out these packets and uh, hopefully by now, I'm certain by now, all of you families have received not only this, but the children have rece received some other goodies uh, that are helping you as we journey together through Lent. But uh, we've sent out these packets and in these packets, there's um, a devotional booklet to help our journey through Lent for everyone. It's called A Story to Tell. And so I hope you received that. You're using it. It began on Ash Wednesday and continues on through Easter. Also in that package, we have a, a request uh, for the community and for all who are here. If you'd like to receive a packet, then please call the church office or look us up. Uh, in your packet, you also received then uh, a card with some interesting things, a card with a picture of a rainbow uh, out here on the river, uh, taken on the river walk, a rainbow stretching from shore to shore, so to speak, from one side of the river to the other. And uh, in there, you have a peace dove, an origami peace dove that is folded, but you also have uh, extra paper so you can fold your own. And we're inviting everyone, especially you, to maybe in the inside of the paper, you write a prayer before you fold your peace dove. Write a prayer. And uh, we want to celebrate, uh, as our name says, peace first. The peace that Jesus brings, that God brings to the world through the message of good news, of resurrection of Jesus uh, conquering of sin and all that would uh, keep us from one another and from God. So we're asking you to fill out one. And uh, of course, we put instructions in on how to fold this uh, peace dove. So um, we're inviting you all to uh, fold peace doves and bring them or send them back to the church. And we're going to decorate for Easter using these peace doves. Well, we wanted to get this message out, and um, uh, like Jesus wanted to get the message out today about what he is about, about uh, what God is about through him. Now, if you wanted to get a message out today, what, what would you do? How would, what would be the best way? Well, like we've, we've made packets for everyone, right? And we've put these packets together, but like the last packet I had, what was I missing? I was missing stamps, the stamps to mail that envelope, this envelope out to everyone so that you could get it right away. Well, in Jesus' day, they, they didn't have a post office and they didn't have stamps for their letters. They had to go out go out and tell the message, that the exciting news that they have contained, uh, like in this packet that we want to share with others. And so it says that Jesus had a very important message to deliver in our gospel today. And, and of course, since he didn't have a postage stamps and a post office, uh, what did he do? He delivered it personally. He went out and personally delivered this message. And the Bible says that Jesus traveled all around Galilee delivering the good news of God. The time has come, Jesus said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent. Turn around from where you're going and believe in the good news. Turn around from the sadness and the pain and the strife in our world and believe in the good news that Jesus is bringing. 
Well, that message that Jesus personally delivered 2,000 years ago is still important for us today. There are many people who need to hear the good news and God's love for them. And that's a bit of what this Lenten journey, this season that we're in now, is all about. It's about getting us ready, preparing ourselves to receive the good news of Jesus Christ died and risen for us and the world, but also to take it out personally, to send it out, to bring it to others personally. Be good news bringers. The Apostle Paul says, blessed are the feet of those who share good news, who proclaim good news. So if a little postage stamp can carry a message of good news, even to people on the other side of the world, can't you and I take God's message of love to our friends and our neighbors who live right here in our community next to us? Let's pray. Gracious God, we have been given the task of delivering the most important message to the world. Help us to be faithful to carry that message to those who need to hear it. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we pause to uh, listen to the words of Holy Scripture and meditate on the gospel. The first lesson is taken from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made live in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and the powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. We continue with our gospel acclamation. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, 
and was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after G, uh, John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our grace and peace be to you all from our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And uh, here I am at our baptismal font at uh, Peace First Lutheran Church. Again, a font in which many of our members, uh, many of you may have been baptized. And I always like to, you know, play in the water. I was at this font not too long ago as Epiphany began with the baptism of Jesus. And we heard this gospel being spoken and we heard the words uh, of promise. And today there's water, it seems. Water and Lent go hand in hand. Baptism, as you heard in the prayer of the day, and Lent, they go hand in hand. Water and the Holy Spirit, season of Lent. On this first Sunday in Lent, uh, what seems to unite each of the sacred texts that we heard uh, indeed, that which, as we heard, imbues our liturgy uh, for today, um, it's water and water themes. The first reading from Genesis and the second reading from uh, 1 Peter about Noah and that ark. And now here, Jesus' baptism. Lent is that 40-day period beginning with Ash Wednesday when we will be asked to accompany Jesus on his journey to the cross and our journey of faith in the gospel, the good news which Jesus proclaims. Our first text comes at the end of that great flood story in Genesis. God now announces a new path with all of creation by using the same words with which he announced the flood. This announcement, however, brings a most amazing blessing. As for me, God says, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you. And God provides us then, provides the world a seal for this covenant, namely, the rainbow. There is no parallel to this in biblical literature. God establishes a universal covenant with all of creation, not just with a people or with individuals, but all of creation, and uses a natural phenomena, namely a rainbow, as an ongoing reminder of God's promised covenant with all creation. Indeed, to this day, the rainbow signs are used in Western society as a positive expression of peace, of joy, of covenantal blessing. Think about how you feel when you see a rainbow, or if you haven't seen one for a while, try to remember how it felt as a child. Did you ever find that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? As a child, I was always eager to have a chance to chase to the end of the rainbow and that elusive pot of gold. But of course, the rainbow kept moving on me, so <clears throat> I never did catch that, that pot of gold. Perhaps the season of Lent is like that elusive pot of gold. We are encouraged to take up the Lenten disciplines of self-examination and repentance, of prayer and fasting, of sacrificial giving and works of love. As disciples of Jesus, our Ash Wednesday liturgy tells us we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Yet we know that the forces leading us away from love of God and neighbor are great. Forces that are both within us and without. 
And that golden peace and feeling of well-being we search for so often eludes us. Perhaps we can begin again today as we embrace the message of God's covenant and new beginning with all of creation. Our second reading for today from 1 Peter chapter 3 keeps the theme of water by tying our own baptism to the story of the flood and Noah. Just as Noah and the others on that ark, the text says, namely there were eight persons, just as these were saved through water, so our text says in similar fashion, baptism through water saves us. Now the early church made much ado about the symbolic significance of this number eight, those eight people on the ark, One of the earliest churches uh, in the Middle East, uncovered in the Holy Land in Megiddo, uh, dating to about 230 after Christ, has a mosaic under the altar based on an octagon motif. The domes of great Gothic cathedrals and later church structures are supported by octagonal structures. The new life given in baptism, the promise of salvation through Jesus' resurrection, is symbolically referred to as occurring on the eighth day. The eighth day begins the new creation, the new life of the saved individual and the salvation of the world. All these traditions begin ringing or reverberating for us, and I love those churches that carry this theme of the octagon from baptism, from the baptismal font uh, through the the dome or through their structures uh, to the pulpit where God's word is proclaimed. The pulpit, for example, at one of the churches I served in uh, the Virgin Islands at uh, Frederick Evangelical Lutheran Church, uh, the pulpit was an octagon and uh, over the pulpit was a canopy that uh, modeled that octagon and inlaid with different colored woods in that canopy was an eight-point compass, a wonderful play on the meaning that we have in our second text today, that we, through baptism, are daily being saved as we hear the word of God proclaimed, the good news that Jesus proclaims in the gospel or begins in today's gospel. We are reminded that through our baptism, we are immersed in life-giving, living water, which is Jesus Christ, God's word become flesh living among us. From here, God's word, God's living word, we take our direction and we are called to become a font of living water as we drink deeply from Jesus as it says in John chapter seven. Well, how do we become this font of living water? Again, the the disciplines of Lent are meant to not only lead us to this font of living water, which is Jesus Christ, but to help us embody this font and become that living water, bringing forth the message of divine love in Jesus Christ in all that we do and all that we say. And these disciplines of Lent are to help us embody that living word of God. Finally, our gospel tells us that at Jesus' baptism, there was a sign from heaven that confirmed God's pleasure in him. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he sees the heavens split wide open and the Holy Spirit descending upon him in the shape of a dove. Again, we have that highly elusive symbol. Remember the dove that Noah sends out and the symbol of the dove with an olive leaf that he brings back to Noah, finding land and assuring him that the punishment of the flood was at an end? With the baptism of Jesus, we are reminded that God has initiated a new day a new day for us and for this world. Likewise, with our baptism, 
we enter into that new day that Jesus proclaims. Our Lent project, which, uh, as I said in the children's sermon, has been sent out to everyone, is to write prayers, your prayers, or prayers for the world, or a poem for peace, or a prayer of peace, a song of peace, whatever you wish to put on that, and to send it to us so that we can adorn our chancel area, our altar area, uh, for Easter Sunday. Trying to embody that which we proclaim, peace first, peace through Jesus Christ, peace through God's, God's uh, redemption of our wounded and broken world. Like bookends, our gospel precedes the voice from heaven heard last week at the Mount of Transfiguration. You are my son, it says today, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Whereas last week, this divine uh, voice proclaimed to everyone from the mountaintop, this is my beloved son. Today we hear that personal affirmation that Jesus is called to publicly give witness to. We are also to hear a personal affirmation and we too are to follow Jesus giving public affirmation of the love of God shown forth in Jesus Christ. This is the beloved. This is the Son of God. Listen to him. We point away from ourselves and like John the Baptist, we point to Jesus. Listen to this one, the living word. As we listen again to the voice of God in Jesus Christ, as we hear the story of God, God's salvation for the world, and as we make this story part of our own, we take up the disciplines of Lent, and we pray that we become immersed in the waters of our own baptismal covenant, that we drink deeply from these waters, the waters that Jesus offers each and every one of us, through his life, through his death, through his resurrection. May that be so as we begin our Lenten journey with Jesus. Amen. Let us join with one another and sing our hymn of the day. Sorry, in the Evangelical Lutheran Worship, hymn 325, I want Jesus to walk with me.
We continue with prayers. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Let us take a moment for personal reflection. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer especially those in our community who have asked for specific prayers and are printed in our bulletin. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved, as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. And be with all those men and women from our community and around the world who are serving in the military, who go into harm's ways. Keep them safe. Let not their hearts become embittered with service. Give them steadfastness and faithfulness, perseverance and patience. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died trusting in your faithfulness. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we pause for a moment to offer up thanks to all who continue to sustain and support this ministry, the outreach, the outreach to our community, the care for uh, one another, and the care for our greater community, and that which goes out even to the world through Lutheran World Federation and uh, our own stewardship sewing group, for example. We give you thanks for continuing to support this ministry and we offer this offertory prayer at this time. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us with your gifts that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And I invite you to Extend a greeting of peace to your loved ones, to your neighbors, or from wherever you are, just out into the world. Give a feeling, a greeting of peace at this time as we prepare our tables for Holy Communion.
we continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to take uh, the bread, the way for what you have prepared for Holy Communion. And if you have others with you, maybe you can commune one another or commune yourself by extending the bread, the host with the words, body of Christ given for you, given for me. I invite you to take the cup that you have prepared and extend it to your loved ones, your neighbors, with the words, the blood of Christ shed for you, or to yourself, the blood of Christ shed for me. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now receive this benediction. You are what God made you to be created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. We close with our hymn in the Evangelical Lutheran worship, hymn 650, in Christ there is no east or west.
shall receive this dismissal. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.